Coucou everyone, my name is Evelyn Valadon and I live in Vancouver, Canada on the traditional, ancestral and unceded territories of the Coast Salish people. I am beyond grateful and honored to participate in Marianne Lohit's project. I'll be reading chapter two of my memoir, I am Reverend Blasphemy's Daughter, History and Demographics. You gather the idea that Mauritius was made first and then heaven, and that heaven was copied after Mauritius, said Mark Twain. Whenever I'm asked by a North American about my little island in the sun, I love to liken it to Hawaii. It is the Hawaii and honeymoon destination of Europeans. With two club meds and a plethora of other beach resorts, the volcanic island that lies in the Indian Ocean truly feels like paradise to foreigners. I once gave a presentation in university on my country of birth. I stated that I would indicate its location on a map with a pencil, and my lecturer wittily and rightly added that I needed a very sharp pencil. Mauritius is only 720 square miles. When Mark Twain's lecture tour took him there in 1896, he described Port Louis, the capital, as, I quote, a little town, but with the largest variety of nationalities and complexions we have encountered yet." End of quote. The small island truly is an enigma with its unusual culturally diverse background. A timeline of key events. As early as the 10th century, the island is discovered by Arab explorers. 16th century, it is officially explored by the Portuguese. 1598, the Dutch arrive and name the island in honor of Prince Moritz van Nassau. It was the Dutch settlement that saw the extinction of the dodo, a heavy bird of the pigeon and dove family that was too big to fly. Its delicious flesh made for a delicacy for humans and its eggs and chicks were preyed upon by rats and monkeys. 1715, the French arrive, renamed the island Ile de France, Isle of France, establish a plantation economy of sugar cane, and bring in Africans as slaves. 1760, the arrival of the first Chinese workers. 1788, Referred to by the French as La Perle de l'Océan Indien, the Pearl of the Indian Ocean, the tropical island provides the setting for the romantic novel Paul et Virginie, penned by Bernardin de Saint-Pierre. After several attempts, the British defeat the French in a naval battle and conquer the island in 1810. The French language being so established, it remains the first language. 1835, the British abolish slavery and bring Indians to work as indentured laborers in sugarcane fields and as fishermen. March 12, 1968, the island gains independence from the British. March 12, 1992, Mauritius becomes a republic. It is now a sovereign democratic state within the Commonwealth with a rich tapestry of ethnicities, cultures, religions, and languages. Modern Mauritians are the descendants of Indians, Africans, referred to as Creole, whether they are of partial or pure African descent. Chinese and Europeans referred to as les Blancs, the white people. The current linguistic situation is very particular. Creole, a bastardized French, is the lingua franca. French is now the second popular language and many Mauritians are fluent in English, although it is hardly spoken in everyday life. As well, a variety of Asian languages is spoken on the island, including Bojpuri and Hakka. 
The prominent religions are Hinduism, Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism. Although the first wave of Indians was brought in as blue-collar workers, it was common practice for some of them to forsake their, their culture and religion and to convert to Christianity, namely Anglicanism. They would also obtain an education and join the middle class. Subsequently, another wave of Indians arrived from middle class and educated backgrounds. The intermingling of different ethnicities is not always in perfect harmony. There was significant racial tension prior to the independence in 1968, and there still is tension every so often between the Hindus and the Muslims. Interracial marriages were extremely rare when my parents were growing up. There was a very distinct segregation across the different ethnicities. There had been uni unions between the French and Africans and their descendants, I'm sorry, there had been unions between the French and Africans and their descendants ever since colonization. However, unions with other ethnicities were rare. Voila! Thank you for watching. A bonne journée mondiale de l'Afrique à tous. Happy Africa Day, everyone. Et merci infiniment, Marianne.